Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 8 for our Godot Action RPG series. In this video, we're going to be doing some more auto-tiling. We're going to be setting up an auto-tile for some cliffs, and these cliffs will have a collision attached to them, so these will be um, tile-based collisions. So let's create a new tile map. We'll click on our world, click a new tile map, for this tile map up here, we'll call this, let's see, we'll call this dirt path tile map. Oh, they capitalize the M, so let's do that too, actually. And we'll drag this up here, and we'll call this, let's see, I don't know what to call it. Wall, cliff, dirt, cliff, tile map. We'll try that, dirt, cliff, tile map. And this one will need to be on top of our other tile map right here. Click on it, come over here to the right, set our tile set to new tile set, come into cell, do 16 by 16. Wait, is this one? This one might be 32 by 32. I think it might be 32 by 32 actually, if I remember. We'll see when we get into it and click on the tile set. We'll add a new image here. We'll do our cliff tile set. Zoom out just a bit. And we'll do new auto tile again. We'll select a region. Do this whole region right here. And you can see it remembered our subtile size from the last one, so we'll set this to 32 by 32 now, and we'll set our step size to 32 by 32 as well. And yes, this one is 32 by 32, I was pretty sure it was. We'll wanna set our bit mask type to three by three minimal. Once again, that's gonna be the same, and we'll save this. And now we can start setting up our bit mask like we did before, and it will be very, well, it, the pattern will be exactly the same. The tricky part is going to be, see how the tile set has a little bit of extra cliff on this side? It makes you think you only wanna come down to here, right? That's what it looks like. But no, in reality, this corner tile should still be placed. Let's go through our logic again here. This corner tile should still be placed when there's a tile to the right of it, above it, and to the right and above in this top right corner here in this north, west, no east, northwest and northeast tiles. So north, east, and northeast tiles, just like that. So it is a little bit tricky because of the cliff, but should be able to do it. Go down all the way with that one. These need to be in the middle, right here, not up here, but in the middle. This one needs to be right here in the middle. And then everything else, will it, the pattern will be the exact same as the previous video we did, right? Here we go, filling out the same exact pattern. Oops, I <laughs> zoomed clear out too far. We'll do here. This will be, oops same and remember you can you can kind of line some of these things up thicker lines here that go down to here thicker lines here these are the thin lines this is where it gets tricky over here in the weirdness but we'll try and do our best here oops Pretty sure we need ones there. I messed this one up the first time I did it because that for sure goes there. I think these go like that. Ooh, one here too. Okay, so once again, if you need to, you can pause and copy mine and that should be good. Let's come back into our I'm gonna do control S to save. We'll come back into our cliff and try placing some of these in the level. There we go. 
seems to work properly. We may end up wanting to move stuff around and adjust around these cliffs a little bit. Okay, so let's come into our dirt path again. I'm gonna remove some of these right here. Kind of have like a central point here like that. And we'll move this bush Where do we want this bush? Put two bushes here maybe, like that. Okay, and you can see that this cliff tile set is designed, since it's got the empty space here, it's designed to work on top of our grass. So you can kind of get some weird stuff if you do our dirt path into the cliff like this, right? This doesn't look good. However, you could do the dirt on top of the cliff like this if you wanted dirt cliffs and you could get that to look pretty good. And that's one of the benefits of having the cliff transparent like this, but it's definitely not necessary. You could potentially set this up to have a grass tile inside as well. I just, I set it up this way because I like the flexibility of it, but there are some limitations to it, so be aware of those. Now, if we run our game, this works properly. Well, it looks good, but we can move through these cliffs. So it doesn't actually function properly. So we need to set up, we need to talk about the other properties of tile sets. So click on the dirt cliff, click on your tile set resource, click here, click in here. And we can talk about some of these other properties, these other tabs up here, what do they do? Well, the collision property is pretty straightforward. This is the collision tab, I guess, is pretty straightforward. This is where you set up your collisions. For this, I generally just use, you can do polygon collision shapes, but I generally just use a rectangle collision shape. And this process is a bit of a pain still. I'd like to see this process improved, streamlined a little bit in future versions of Godot. What, you know, once you get it set up, then it's done. You don't have to mess with it again, but setting it up initially is a little bit of a process. So I'm gonna step you through it. So first we click on the square for doing a square collision shape, we stick it here, right? And it automatically makes one for us. Well, we need to make another one over here now. So we'll click there, click on the square, and click here. Now that's very slow, right? <laughs> to do this, because we have to do it with every single tile set here, because they all need collisions attached to them. So there's not really a way to make this faster. I'll probably end up speeding this up in the video but the one thing that does seem to make it faster is if I click here to select my next tile, then I click on this, I can click anywhere else in here and it will still create it over here. So that just makes it nice because you can click on the next, you can double click on the next tile you wanna do. So we'll click, let's start here on the farthest tile. So we'll do here, then we'll click on square and we'll double click on our next tile. You see that, click here next one, and these are double clicks. And that speeds up the process a little bit, uh, but it's still not the fastest process for setting up these collisions. Okay, and there we have collisions set up on all of our tiles. Now, if any Kiddo contributors are watching this, I my suggestion, um, and obviously this is just a suggestion because I haven't ever contributed to Godot before, but my suggestion for making this kind of an easy fix for making this faster would be to add a hotkey for this create new rectangle because that would speed up. I wouldn't have to click back and forth like this. I could just press a hotkey on my keyboard and immediately set the tile the collision for each new tile. But once we have these set up, we can save run the game, and we immediately have collisions working with these. Now I didn't set this up to work with depth, and I'm not going to be setting this up to, be, to work with depth, because that complicates things, 
um, action RPGs as you get more and more complicated with depth, adding jumping and stuff. That's not the scope of this project. That's not what I'm going to be going into. But you could do that. It is possible to add depth. And part of what would be if you're going to keep your game 2D, which if you're going to do depth in an action RPG, I'd recommend going 3D, but then giving making it look 2D. Uh, but if you want to try and keep it 2D, you can use Z and indexing and you can set the Z index on each individual tile, which basically is just how it will be layered. So you could, you know, bigger values are drawn on top in this case in Godot, which is the opposite of Game Maker. So you'd set, you know, these these top pieces to be larger and then you could have your player go behind them and you would set up your collisions to allow for that using using smaller uh, using using a polygon with a smaller snap size so that you could create collisions inside of here and not have a collision on the full thing. And then once again, you wouldn't be able to have see-through tiles like I do. You'd have to have the grass part of this cliff so that your player wouldn't show up beneath here, right? That wouldn't make sense. So there's a lot of things on top of that and that's part of why I chose to do it this way. Keep it simple. But now we have working collisions, and you've learned about the z-index stuff too. Can't quite squeeze through there. That gap must be too small for a character's collision. So let's see the other ones real quick. We have occlusion. So what is occlusion set up for? Well, Godot has a built-in lighting system, and I'm not going to go in-depth into the lighting system in Godot, but you can set up occlusion uh, shapes that will make it so that the light, when you cast a light, these shapes will cast shadows. So you can have your auto tiles automatically create shadows using that occlusion and setting up the collisions for the occlusion. Navigation is for Godot's built-in navigation stuff. You can easily navigate, you can set up a navigation mesh and then use that for, you know, enemies or whatever to be able to navigate a tile set as well. Let's see, we'll, well, let's set up our icon again, because I like to set this up. We'll do the single tile icon. And the last one is priority. Now, priority allows you to create some, so let's say you have a grass background, right? And as you're placing it in the room, you want it to randomly place a grass tile that has a flower in it every once in a while. Well, with your priority property, you can set that up. You can set up, oh, you know, I want this tile to be placed every one and however many tiles that get placed. And so you can give your little flower a 1 in 50 or a 1 in 20 chance of getting placed randomly when you're placing it in the room. So that as, you know, if you wanted to place those by hand, you could, but you can set up the priority to do it for you manually. And so that the system does it, you don't have to worry about doing it all the time. It can really speed up the process of level design once again. And that's kind of the idea. You set up your tile sets, you set up all these different properties in here, then when you're creating your levels, it's all really quick. You just create your cliff where you want it, right? And now when you run the game, you immediately have new collisions right there. You don't have to replace your collision boxes. And that's the idea behind this. So it is a little bit, once again, the tile set and the tile set system in Godot can be a little bit convoluted, it feels like, if I'm being honest, like going from here to here, clicking here, clicking here. There's a lot of, there's kind of a lot of steps along the way. But once it's set up, it makes designing your levels really quick and easy, and that's the benefit of it. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, as always, this series was made possible by, by the Kickstarter backers for the One Bit Kiddo course. You can check that out if you would like. There'll be a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will talk to you all later.